Hi everyone and welcome back for the final session of this course, Hacks for Hybrid Working. Um, if you've made it this far, we're so happy you're here. And if not, if you're just catching up or just joining, that's also okay. We've got a lot of content uh, where you can catch up on. We'll put it in the comments in Discord. Um, Marin and I will be kind of wrapping up this course by just sort of reflecting on the last couple of weeks and thinking about where we are now and what we hope for the future. So I guess before really jumping in to a lot of the conversations that we wanted to talk about today, it might start, we might start first by recapping last week. So Marin, did you want to give us a, a quick recap? Sure thing. Hi, everybody. Great to be here and welcome back uh, to Hex for Hybrid Working. Um, Last week, we looked at a whole bonanza of hacks, and I'm really excited to hear um, what you've tried. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation. I thought it was really fun to start by thinking about how could you be 1% more comfortable, and then thinking about um, what else you could do. So in a moment, I'll bring up um, some slides, so just to go through the recap. But I also wanted to encourage you to share um, with us here in the Discord chat what you've tried. Um, it'd be lovely to hear your reflections and seeing what works and what doesn't. And Lauren, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to see what you tried. So I'm just going to see um, what else we need to cover, because last week was a busy week. And yeah, it was also... <laughs> radio obviously which we'll talk about more later but i hope you enjoyed that special q a session with jim now um last week's checklist that we asked you to complete if you're following along is to add the hex to try out to your hybrid working roadmap and i'll talk you through that in a minute um, and also to try out one of the hacks we introduced so before we go and talk about the roadmap uh, lauren what did you try out last week um, that was fun. I really appreciated everybody throwing uh, different hacks in the chat and uh, it was really inspiring just to see how others, you know, what makes their working environment 1% more comfortable. Um, so that those were all super helpful conversations for me. Um, one of the things that I recently tried was a hacks to try with your team. Um, so we've uh, over the the period of having this course in place, we've really kind of um, added in Music Mondays as something more consistent for our team, which has been really cool to see. Um, and it's always something that I've watched from the sidelines, um, you know, where in kind of encouraging folks, hey, you know, you should do a radio session stream and, you know, I'll listen in or something. But um, Meredith and I um, in this past week, uh, got on a call together and figured out how to um, host our own radio session and stream in from Spotify. And so that was really fun, uh, you know, because we just basically tinkered around with uh, different tools to make that happen. Um, and it felt really empowering by the end, too, because we, you know, it wasn't as complicated as we thought it was going to be. Um, but it was fun to kind of not only, you know, hang out with Meredith for an hour and figure out how to do that, but also now I know for the future and I can very easily, you know, just put out a, a radio stream if I wanted. So that was really exciting, not only to kind of connect with, you know, different team members, for example, but also just to um, feel like, okay, I'm able to pull in different elements like music into um, my working space. So I really enjoyed that one. And uh, this course, I think, or last week really gave me the motivation to, okay, I'm going to officially do this now, you know, so that was exciting. Um, but what about you? Um, I'll 
I tried out a hack for myself um, laptop sleeve, um, immediately improved my working life and the appearance of my laptop, which has been, you know, really looking forward to making new real estate for new stickers. Um, I really <laughs> I thought it was so clever and such a great little hack. Um, it made a big difference. As I was mentioning on Discord um, last week as well, I've been trying out Asana and mm -hmm. actually, I, I had an experiment with these um, desktop organizer backdrops that you shared with me. I love that hack. Um, but when it came to it, when I tried it out, I didn't actually use it. Um, so I like the look of it a lot. I like the principle. But what I came to realize is that I have so many more tasks than files. I don't think my work actually requires enough organizing of files. Um, and so instead, having a whole new tool to make to-do lists has been so joyful. And I'm now fully happy making different projects and goals and task lists. And it's given me a whole new enthusiasm for organizing and prioritizing my workload. Yeah, that's, um, that's awesome to hear, though. You know, I've had a um, had a friend in college and he was really big on using sticky notes and having a mm -hmm. sticky note app that he just kept on his desktop. And that was his way of, you know, having it you know, in the forefront, something that was set on his desktop, but was still sort of that list of tasks. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's always fascinating to me how people sort of, you know, approach that a little bit. Um, so it's cool to hear. Yeah, I mean, um, sticky notes are amazing. And um, if there are any um, fellow stationary affiniados out there, there is a fantastic book about stationary. And um, I'll put the link in Discord if you want to read along. Um, there's a whole history of, of sticky notes and where they come from <laughs> and who invented them. And yeah, I mean, fascinating um, for those of us who are into that sort of thing. Um, but so in order to complete week three, um, we were hoping to get you to think about hacks to try for yourself, hacks to try for your team, and also to consider which single hack could immediately improve your day and why. So hopefully um, this has been a helpful part of the course for you. Uh, I've certainly learned a lot and I can see folk are continuing to share hacks in this course. So that's the recap for week three. I will also say before we jump on, because I realized I kind of jumped down to hacks to try with your team and didn't really mention the ones that I've tried for myself. So really quick, I will say that um, I cleaned my laptop screen from fingerprints, which I have to say was so subtle and so minimal. Again, that that one percent idea. Um, but it's made such a difference. Um, I didn't realize how dirty my screens were until I actually cleaned them. So that was <laughs> really exciting for me. Um, I also updated uh, the tone and brightness for my monitor, uh, which I realized was coming in really harsh and I think giving me headaches a little bit. So uh, that has also made a huge difference um, too. So um, those weren't ones that I had mentioned last week. So I just wanted to, to put that here because it's made a big difference for me. Excellent. Well, we look forward to hearing what you have tried out. So please um, share with us on Discord um, and let us know if you found any hacks that work for you. And are we ready to jump into this week's topic? Because I'm quite excited about this week. I know it's the final week of the course. Um, but it is the time when we bring it all together. So where do you want to start? Um, should we have a, a think about how it all fits together maybe and then jump into the conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, this is kind of the week for us to sort of reflect on what we've covered over the last couple of weeks and then thinking about where we want to you know, what we've learned and what we're hoping for for the future. Um, so for me, you know, thinking about kind of starting with that idea of thinking, OK, what is my actually working? What's my working model that I'm a part of? Right. Am I in sort of this hybrid thing? Am I in distributed working or remote working or whatever that looks like? And then, of course, if you remember in the beginning, we had that hybrid working wheel where we were figuring out the things that you know, we're working well for us and not working well for us, not so much thinking about the tools yet, but just 
how we were sitting in our working spaces um, and what was uncomfortable and, you know, where there was room for improvement. Um, so laying that foundation, I think, in week one was really helpful just to sort of place us in the course. Um, and it was really cool to see those conversations just happening organically in week one and where folks were, you know, what the entry point was for folks, wh where the perspectives were at the start mm -hmm. of this course. Um, you know, and I think there were so many different, you know, experiences around working coming in where I feel really comfortable being in a dedicated working space, for instance, others, you know, like the change of scenery and liked to move around and just be with their laptop and not feel tied to a, a larger desk or office space. So even that conversation right away was um, really cool to see. Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure where, if there were any uh, reflections or takeaways that you found in that first week. Yeah, I think one of the things that's been interesting to me is that, um, you know, working, the way we work really evolves. And I think how we feel about it also does. Yeah. And I'm actually, I'm just going to navigate back to, um, to that week. Um, so we can have it up on the screen um, just briefly. So I felt quite interested how much my perception of the different aspects of hybrid working change over time. Um, some things that I felt really positive about a few years ago, maybe I now feel differently about. And some of the conversations we had around, you know, how can you use this tool for yourself and for others? I think for me, this is kind of like a, an easy exercise to come back to every few years, but also one that I try and um, encourage people I work with to do sometimes, just to check in with each other's perception. You know, is it working for them? Um, particularly if you're managing people, you know, how is that? Um, how is their perception of how things are going? Is that the same as yours? <laughs> you know, is everybody really um, happy with their work-life balance? Does everybody hate the commute? It's a useful benchmark to kind of just try and start off the conversation. I agree. Um, and the last thing I wanted to add was that, um, particularly in the first couple of weeks of the course, one of the things that really resonated with me was just making time to think about it <laughs> rather than time to be productive. So that's one of the things that I, I was a real moment for me where I was thinking it's actually really exciting to sit in a virtual space with folk who are all taking a minute to step back and think, huh, you know, how is this working? Right. And no, I appreciate what, what you said about coming back to this often. And I, I think even, you know, in seasons throughout the year, your answers might change. For instance, we have really busy times at Reclaim at the start of the semester and at the end of the semester is just traditionally very busy uh, for us. Whereas the summers, you know, that work sort of uh, tapers off a little bit and we can start to think more about internal projects or roadmap things. And so like, you know, my answers for this working wheel change throughout a given year. And I agree with you. I think, you know, taking time constantly to check in with yourself, even before you even get into the nitty gritty about the tasks that you've got on your plate or your workflows or the tools or the things that you are you know, touching or working with on a daily basis, but stepping back and thinking, okay, how do I personally feel about these categories? And it's, a, you know, it's personal, it is. And so, yeah. um, you know, even if you don't necessarily feel comfortable putting that in discord, I, you know, I completely understand because for me, it has led to sort of this personal exploration around mm -hmm. and, and reflection around how I handle work. Um, you know, which of course gets into, it's more than just that surface level, like, oh, I handle work by checking off this box, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, I handle work yeah. by, you know, thinking about it outside of work and is that okay? You know, so, you know, it, it does kind of lead you on your personal journey a little bit. And I think even before getting into that stuff, um, for, it was really helpful just to take the time to situate ourselves in this course at the beginning. One of the, um, one of the things I wanted to just come back to um, before we move on in our conversation was this 
relationship between you know the individual and work um, and one of the links we've um, shared in this week's blog post is um, to a project called Pro Project Oxygen which is like Google's kind of HR sandbox project and if you're particularly interested in people analytics and large-scale people management and thinking about what hybrid working in you know the vision of big tech looks like i, I really recommend you have an explore of that project um, but one of the things that i um so i work with a lot of people who are enthusiasts of you know collecting data finding out at the analytics of things and one of the things that really always makes me consider my approach is when I read projects like that, which are very much about using quantitative data and analytics to understand how to make people more productive and how happy people are at work. And I think that's an interesting concept to me because so much of this, what we talked about in this course, would be, I think, extremely difficult to capture by, you know, formal analytics and, and to measure. So it is one of the things that I'm interested in exploring. And one of the things that this course has made me revisit is, you know, to what extent can we use tools like this hybrid working wheel to open up a conversation and to try and spark reflection, you know, and to what extent can we use those over kind of, you know, other types of evaluation or tracking? Yeah, I really would have to, I mean, ag agree with that. Absolutely. I think the second you pull things into a hybrid working model or a fully distributed working model, you lose a lot of that visibility naturally, just in the type, the work that you're doing, you know, and so even employee happiness and, you know, kind of culture conversations around, you know, aside that it's hard to track that stuff already. And so when you're taking away even more visibility, that stuff becomes really challenging. And there's no real structure in place to have those conversations unless you're making an intentional choice to say, okay, we as a team need to set aside time to reflect on this and to make sure to check in with ourselves personally, but as a team, you know, and to make sure that we feel connected in that way. Um, and, you know, also just the idea of tracking time or tasks, it's, it's, it's hard to, to do that in hybrid settings as well, I think. So seeing where the work is happening is always a challenge, but then, you know, the second you're pulled into a hybrid setting, it's it's that much more challenging. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, that relates a lot to what we talked about in week two, um, which we could maybe um, start to kind of move on to, because there is so much around how the tools and platforms that we use and our relationship to them that shapes all of that. Um, so I'm going to just share an example as a bit of a um, memory jog there of one of the roadmaps that we um, that we shared, like an example of yours might look completely different, or you might have decided to do something, you know, different for yourself. Um, but I just wanted to share this one, um, as this was the week all about tools and platforms. Yeah, this is a super helpful visual. And so I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, to put this up, because in week two, we really kind of took it a step further where we said, okay, here's where we're, we're situated in our, our working spaces. Now let's kind of dive into the tools. Let's dive into some of the platforms that we're using regularly. And, you know, before even trying to change things or update our workflows or processes to make us more efficient and all of those, you know, catchy phrases, it's important to just think about you know, where it sits on your your spectrum of happiness, you know, are they making you happy or sad and really sort of simplifying it in that, you know, with that idea in mind, I think it's again, step one to figuring out what makes the most sense for you personally, or for your team. Um, and so I, this is such a cool visual, you know, Marin that you shared, and it was also, I think, what one of the things that I was you know, remembering in this week was that, you know, some of these you have the power to fix, but some of them you're just sort of 
stuck with based on a decision that was made for you. Um, and so, you know, making the best of, of your situation is part of this week too, I think. Yeah, I agree. And and it was so interesting to hear, particularly in a Discord discussion in that week, you know, how a lot of tools and, you know, apps, I think we all recognize weren't necessarily, you know, good or bad kind of in general, but kind of the way we use them for and our purposes and as the context changes, you know, um, the, the, the satisfaction with each tool or platform might change as well. So, you know, I was, I was mentioning that the way I use a tool like, um, WhatsApp, for example, like, um, I don't use it regularly for work, but sometimes I'm pulled into these things, um, that are kind of vaguely work related. And then I find it so irritating because that's not a workspace for me. So I don't want to have notifications about work stuff in a place where they're not normally. And like, you know, for me, it, it caused all kinds of things, irritations. So for me, it was like a really unhelpful tool, but obviously in a different context, it might be a super helpful tool. Um, one of the links that we included in this week's blog post was around um, an open framework to leadership um, made by the Mozilla Foundation. And I think being open around usage of tools and technologies is one of the things, um, well, that's inspiring about the team you work with and the work that your organization does. But I think that's really inspiring in general. And there are very few leaders, I think, who are. There is still kind of a bit of a myth around, you know, sort of as a leader, you have to have all the answers, you have to be super capable and competent. And, you know, there's sort of like that outer veneer of, I know what we're doing, that you kind of feel like sometimes people should be projecting in those roles. Um, I've certainly been there where I've kind of thought, oh, I need to know the answers to this. And I think leading in the hybrid workplace is simply not going to enable you to do that. You know, um, right. tools change all the time and you just don't know what's around the corner. Right. And yeah. so I think we all have to adopt a certain degree of openness for effective leading in, in the workplace. And, you know, that obviously ha um, can be applied to projects or to people or to different, um, different elements of work. Yeah, or even just being a part of a hybrid team, you know, being mm -hmm. flexible to change, but also just being open to those conversations a little bit, you know, for us at Reclaim, like one of the things that I come back to always is how cPanel has changed their model recently, where they've completely updated their theme, their licensing costs are going up regularly, you know, they've they've really kind of updated things. Another one that feels very relevant for our community right now, I think is just WordPress in general. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of folks have relied on WordPress in the past to be this beginner application for folks on the web. And WordPress has changed undoubtedly <laughs> in, in this space that is really kind of becoming you know, helpful for web developers, which of course is not, you know, a beginner student who's thinking about the web for the first time. So I think absolutely, you know, our relationship to digital tools will change and does change. And I think, you know, not having all of the answers and, and recognizing that, that that's okay. And step one is just constantly being in a state of evaluation. Is this still working for what we need, you know, based off of processes or goals that we had in place years ago? And if not, you know, are there things that we can do to tweak um, these? So, you know, WordPress is in the green for you, which is wonderful. I, it's still where I have my my personal sites as well. A lot of our work for Reclaim is still in WordPress and I don't think it's going away by any means, you know, but for other folks that are maybe in the Discord chat right now, WordPress might not be in the green. Um, and so that's, you know, I think just always a conversation that we should continue to have about these tools and ways that we can can hopefully tweak them to either keep them around or find alternatives. So yes, it is a always changing conversation, I think, with this particular slide and week. Yeah. And that, um, in that week, I think we also um, focused a lot on, on the skills and digital literacies because um, a lot of the relationship that, you know, 
that we have with the tools and platforms we use is totally shaped by our ability to to control them to use them to configure them so that they work and i was really interested we had a fantastic conversation around you know how do you manage notifications how do you manage being available versus not being available and i think uh, one of our participants used that lovely metaphor um that they developed a, a cadence of of when to be in touch and and when not to be in touch so i am um, i was inspired by that but also it just really reminded me of how much you need to um how much you need to continuously learn and um, that is, I think, an expectation of hybrid working that many organizations seem to underestimate, I think, you know. Yeah, where that was kind of a, a helpful reminder for me that week as well, that, you know, sometimes an application might be in the red, not because it's not useful, be, but because you don't know how to use it, because you, you either <laughs> haven't yeah. taken the time to learn or you don't have the resources given to you to use it successfully, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and an example that I go back to often too is um, Asana, which I know has come up regularly just in conversations over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, and it took Reclaim quite a few years to figure out how Asana could or should be used for us. Mm -hmm. At one point many years ago, we kept records, um, you know, for like, customer stories and things that we wanted to, you know, uh, have around so we could use internally. Um, it then transformed into more of a personal space. And now it's really kind of taken shape or adopted for our team for internal work requests, you know, and I, I think if you have a use for tools, you know, and you know how to use it for what you need, it becomes successful, right? But if you don't have that need or you can't even articulate what that need is then you know the tool itself might not be very helpful so uh remembering that and again constantly reflecting on that uh was a helpful exercise in the second week um and something that i definitely want to continue and and do often not just mm -hmm. you know once a year but maybe once a season or you know every couple months or something just to check in like that first week um, you know, about the tools that we're using and if they're so helpful. You um, you mentioned around work-life balance a couple of times um, throughout these weeks. And I know that's one of the areas that many of our participants also kind of are thinking about. Um, and I know that this week we shared a, a, a reading um, by Mary Burgess, um, her thoughts on work-life balance. And um, yeah, I wonder whether we should just reflect on that briefly now because I think it kind of relates to all the weeks um especially you know when we talked about the hacks for hybrid in week three last week around sort of you know work-life balance what you can do practically to improve upon that what are your yeah. thoughts no I I'm glad you brought that up and I I do encourage folks yeah to to read uh Mary's article if you haven't yet um we'll make sure all of those links are in the chat because I do think that that one did resonate with me quite personally and as I mentioned you know from from week 1 and onwards I was sort of on this more personal journey or it, it was a, a bit of a surprise to realize how personal these sort of reflections can be it's not just the tools or the mouse that I'm using, or, you know, it's, it's taking a look at how you work and what will make that working better, right? Better for you personally. And better can be defined in so many ways. Efficient, sure. Productive, you know, those sorts of things, working with a team, connection, but also, you know, personal happiness, preventing burnout, you know, those are all personal things. Um, so for me, it was really, surprising to to realize how big of a link or overlap hybrid working has with time management um you know and sort of work prioritization and communicating to a larger team in order to communicate you have to be able to articulate what you're doing right and so that again brings you back to how you're doing work and how often you're doing that work. Um, and so I ended up kind of on this personal 
I think, journey over the last couple of weeks. And even before that, prepping for this course, thinking about, okay, the root of my own burnout in the past and how I can avoid that and how I can make my working environment healthy, which is, you know, again, very personal, but has led me to sort of realize, you know, my own sort of anxieties around my to-do list and how I can check out in the evening. And I think, um, you know, having processes in place to, to do that has, has been a huge game changer for me to make my work situation healthy or healthier, I should say. Um, so Maren, I'm not sure if you've had a similar experience or uh, been on a personal journey as well, but it's it's been eye-opening for me. <laughs> well, I, I can only echo that. Yeah, it's a very real struggle. And I think it's, you know, it's important to know how much these things can change over the course. Like I've been in my role for over a decade and, um, you know, I've, I've definitely struggled to find balance. I think uh, in a previous week we talked about, you know, how it's hard to um, sometimes differentiate between work-life balance and doing things that you enjoy. And I'm, I'm a really creative person. I love being creative in all sorts of things um, outside of work. But sometimes I think, oh, I'll do something fun. And like before I know it, I've like spent three hours working on my computer, which was fun, um, <laughs> but isn't necessarily good for balance. Um, and I think one of the um, aspects that I try and remind myself of is, you know, I'm not just a brain, I'm a body too. And working from home as an embodied thing, um, my legs, my arms, everything about me needs attention, not just what I have in my head. And, um, and that is, I think, a harder thing to, to remind yourself when you are a hybrid worker who often spends time on their own. Um, like the last week, um, I've been alone at home and um, it's just been me all day, every day. And it can easily turn into me working all day, every day. Um, and I enjoy it and it's exciting and there's always more work to do. And um, ultimately, I think that's my hope for this roadmap. And what I want to go on to talk about is, you know, how can you use a course like this? How can you use a tool like this um, in order to help set yourself some meaningful intentions that are meaningful to you in your context. Mm -hmm. um, and my intentions or your intentions, you know, may be completely irrelevant to others. Um, they have their own intentions or goals or issues or milestones. Um, but ultimately, I think it's a process of negotiating <laughs> yeah. work-life balance with yourself. And as you mentioned, it is different for everyone. Like I think some people do appreciate stepping back from their desk going on a walk or something and thinking or strategizing or brainstorming about work in a different, you know, with a different scenery or having a fresh air to do that, you know? So that was a helpful reminder for me that, you know, just because I have to have those boundaries in order to be, you know, a healthy worker and a healthy leader or healthy, you know, colleague, you know, I think, others might just work differently and, you know, prefer to, to work in the evenings and, you know, take a different type of break during the day. So I appreciated that reminder uh, this week as well, or the week that we were, you know, kind of focused on this. I think um, the other thing too, I uh, pulled a quote from Mary's article on mm -hmm. work-life balance. She said, compassionately ruthless for intentionally created spaces which I think is such a, um, a, just a brilliant way to articulate, at least for, for me, you mm -hmm. know, I have to be so strict with myself about saying, okay, you know, here's my on time where I'm locked in and here's where I have to be checked out to have that break. Um, so compassionately ruthless. I just I thought that that was beautifully said. <laughs> I can only agree. And, you know, I think there's definitely a gendered perspective to, you know, work-life balance. And, you know, that's a that's an interesting subject um, on which there's around lots of feminist readings. Um, but before we get sidetracked altogether, um, let's go and we want to just spend the next five or ten minutes going through the roadmap and showing you how to use it 
if you want to go and set some intentions. Um, and this is really the part of the, the course where you can bring all these different elements together and hopefully find a useful way to yeah, chart your course. So let's jump in. Working roadmap, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Um, so Lauren, for this first bit, I'm just going to explain how it works. And then I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to define a goal um, <laughs> to help play along here. Um, but basically, each part of the last bit of this roadmap shares advice on what to do. So to first get started, um, just take a moment to check back in with your scores you gave each aspect of your hybrid working meal in week one. And you might say, hey, I didn't complete that. I was very busy that week. And that's not a problem at all. Whether you have completed it or not doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is that you have a look now and you can go back in the roadmap. It's all in the same document and just have a think about, you know, looking at the prompts and check in with it now what area of hybrid working has the most impact on your overall way of working it might be your environment it might be that you have a lot of family responsibilities while you're working it might be that you have a very um keyboard loving cat who keeps sitting in front of you whatever it might be there might be something or you might have one thing in mind that you'd really like to change in the future or maybe many things or it might be that you have an aspect that you are able to change quite easily. So that's kind of some prompts to get you started thinking. And then what we hope you would do is to sit down and think, okay, how could I write down some intentions or some goals? So Lauren, have you come up with one? <laughs> yeah, so um for me, thinking about this course and what has had the most impact on my working has been, again, just quite a surprise because I think I've made small tweaks throughout all of the weeks based on the different prompts or units that we've had in place, um, you know, that have ultimately led you know, now coming at the end, feeling like, wow, okay, I feel much better than when I started this course. So I think, you know, early on with my hybrid working wheel, um, I, and I joked about this in the beginning, but that idea of my morning commute where, um, you know, I'm starting my day earlier, or mm -hmm. that was the goal, right, in order to feel like I had time to mentally prepare for work, as opposed to just waking up and walking 10 steps, and sitting at my computer and not really having that balance with life, right? Because otherwise, especially as the time changes now, it's like, you know, if you don't set aside time before and after work, you're really just working and then the sun goes down and it's dark, right? So um, yeah, I think uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've really been intentional about waking up earlier and, mm -hmm. you know, going on a walk with my dog. Um, you know, we're just doing things before my work day begins. And that has made such a big difference for me. Um, and that's mm. not even getting into the working part of work, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just putting me in a healthy space to sit up, sit down at my desk and feel ready for work. So um, again, small, subtle tweaks, but that's made a big difference for me so far. That's really inspiring. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I, I really focused on collaboration. That was the area of work that I felt I wanted to focus on um, throughout this course. And I did try some of the, um, the different things throughout this course. And I don't know if they've worked particularly well or not, but I think my goal in this particular area to set an intention is to really keep persevering and finding better ways to collaborate and communicate online. Um, I think sometimes I have a great idea, I've tried it out, maybe it didn't work exactly first time, but I think the, the key here is to keep on at it and to keep trying and to keep thinking about it. Um, so that's, I think, gonna be my, my goal for that. Um, keep thinking about how to collaborate with others online. So I hope you're getting a sense of how this is going to work. Um, but we're going to go and show you the second part um, as well um, and see if we can um, walk you through that as well. So that is the week where we talked about tools and platforms. Um, 
the kind of initial prompt is for you to check back um, either mentally or if you've completed it, that kind of spectrum slide that we looked at earlier. How did you distribute those tools across the spectrum? And again, we've included some prompts for you to start thinking. So um, you could ask yourself which tool or platform has the most impact on your overall way of working? Which tools would you like to start or stop using? Which ones would you like to learn how to use better? Or final prompt, what about your use of technology are you able to improve most readily? So again, there is a space there for you to define intentions. And if you want to write that down, you're welcome. Um, or you can just um, make intentions um, mentally and commit to something. Um, Lauren, again, do you have any goals or intentions for this section? or? Yeah, uh, no, I, um, this was a big week for me and I think, uh, sort of blended into the other weeks as well, because, you know, a lot of the work that I do ends up, you know, being focused on the tools that we're using or the platforms that we've got, not only for our team, but the ones that we're supporting for a larger community. And so, um, I think for me, it's really been about, uh, streamlining the tools that I'm using personally and sort of con consolidating or, simplifying my workflows as much as possible, um, you know, and not letting those processes take up more time, you know, by following those, you know, weird processes that I have in place just to say that I did them, you know, so really thinking about, okay, um, the processes that I have in place to be efficient and to promote better work as opposed or to support that work as opposed to just, oh, I'm going to put stuff in this tool because this tool looks pretty, you know, or something like that. That's a, a something that I've done in the past. And so really trying to eliminate the fluff, I think, uh, has been big for me. Um, you know, I've also things that have been improved most readily, I think, um, unsus subscribing from emails, updating how mm -hmm. I'm taking in notifications has been huge. Um, I've also done software updates, you know, which is something that I've actually put off more often um, than I care to admit. And so now I've kind of worked it into my day where at the end of my day, as I'm signing off, you know, I sort of check, um, are there any software updates that I can run at the end of my day when I'm not concerned about waiting for my computer to reload or things like that. So that was a really easy step to add into the end of my day. Um, and now, you know, logging on at the beginning, everything's fresh and up to date. I'm not getting those pesky notifications. Um, and so that's been really great for me. I think um, one of the things that I still want to do or that I'm still working on very regularly, um, sort of as defining go goals for the future is just thinking about the tools and platforms that we are offering to our larger community at Reclaim, thinking about what's working for folks, uh, what's not working for folks, where can Reclaim um, you know, continue to build out support documentation or resources around the tools and platforms that we're providing, uh, while also balancing, you know, um, the very real struggles that come with tools changing, you know, going back to the conversation we just had, you know, right now, PHP just, um, you know, we've just pushed out a new version of PHP. And that's something that we'll continue to be doing into next year. And a lot of these open source platforms are not yet uh, working with the latest versions of PHP, and it leads to a lot of breakage in sites. And so really kind of balancing, you know, how are, how is Reclaim continuing to keep, you know, our servers and our sites and, you know, the applications that we're providing secure as possible, keeping them as secure as possible, while also, you know, balancing that things aren't working right now in, in for some, some platform. So that's, an ongoing conversation, of course, but definitely something that I think um, I'm thinking about often. And I know others at Reclaim and the folks that mm. use these tools are as well. And it gets back to that idea of just the tools are always changing. And so our reflection on them, you know, and our evaluation of them has to, you know, be constantly happening as well. So that's definitely probably more than you wanted for this answer, but a lot of what I'm thinking about currently for this slide. 
I think that's what I'm really hoping um, for everybody who's listening as well. You know, you might find that your thoughts are, are quite wide ranging. You might think about your team. You might think about the whole organization. You could just think about your morning routine. Um, <laughs> there isn't a particular, um, I think, level at which we're hoping you know you can make positive change it really depends on your context and yeah i'm curious to hear um in the chat as well what what folk are thinking um what kind of incremental changes to make you know um what one of the things we kept saying um throughout this course is that one percent is a good place to start and that is really you know the the idea here you might make some big changes or you might make some really small ones um, which brings us to the, the third part of the roadmap, um, which is the hacks section. So again, we've already talked a little bit about earlier recapping last week, uh, which hacks did you try out? Um, again, we've included lots of um, prompts for you to start reflecting. You could start with what new hacks you did discover. You could think about hacks you could use to improve one of the aspects of your work. Um, you could try out some things that didn't work for you. Um, like I fell in love with the idea of back top, uh, desktop background organizers and then I didn't really get on with it very well. Um, or we could also just take a lighthearted approach and think, what was the most fun? What did you try? And I have to say, I really, really enjoyed the drive and listen hack um, mm -hmm. that um, that Taylor shared, I think. Um, I thought that was genius and I really enjoyed it. And I've spent some time on that um, in the last couple of weeks, just like, you know, taking a five minute break to myself. Um, and I also tried a music hack with my team as a result of this week where we did an 80s silent disco um, in the chat. So <laughs> we all shared music suggestions and then listened to them. And that was really fun. We all really enjoyed that. Um, so okay. yeah, how about you, Lauren? Um, what about the Hex week would you put on your roadmap? Yeah, um, no, this week was super fun just to kind of again, hear everyone's ideas, the things that are working for them, the things that they want to try. And of course, hacks that I have around things to try, you know, in Slack, for example, if you're not using Slack, then that's obviously not a, a hack that's going to mean anything to you. So I think it really does depend on the workflows or tools that you have in place. So it, it's kind of that idea of just building off of previous weeks as well. Um, I think things that have made a difference for me, the ones that I've um, mentioned around, um, the the radio uh, music Mondays with the team have been really great uh, and playing around in that space has been super fun, I think, for me as well. Um, I also let's see what else. I mean, that idea of making your your workspace one percent more comfortable. Um, you know, I added a candle to my desk again, very simple things, but like it's. I bought the candle on a really important trip that I took uh, and it means something significant for me. So, you know, just kind of updating my space, I feel refreshed uh, and feel like, you know, just checking in with yourself around small things that can make a difference. I also got a new uh, mouse, which is more comfortable for mm -hmm. you know my hand. Again, it's small things. It almost feels silly bringing them up, but I think like as a whole, when you add in these small elements, suddenly you, you know, your working space feels way more comfortable, way more than one percent comfortable. So um, that this has been a fun week for me, just to continue playing around. I think that's a really important thing to emphasize, you know, like um, what's within our control to change should be something fun. Um, and, you know, there is nothing frivolous about trying out fun hacks um, in a work scenario. Oh, excuse me. So bringing this all together, um, we hope that, and before we talk about celebration, which you get instead of a checklist, as this is the last week, um, which I'm excited to go on to, I just want to kind of reflect on how you could bring all of these intentions together. There is a dedicated space for you to start just making notes. Um, and 
hopefully each part of the course will stack on top of the other. Um, some of them might have been more relevant than others. Um, but overall, and that's what I'm really excited to talk about um, before we come to the end of our time today, is to think about how you're thinking about hybrid working is changing um, or has changed, anything new you've discovered. And I have to say, you know, clearly I'm super interested in this topic. I think about this quite a lot, but I've learned loads of new things along this course. And Lauren, I wonder whether you want to share each, maybe one or two things we've learned along the way and we've discovered. Um, do you want to kick us off? Definitely. I, um, I'm just making sure I wasn't muted. Goodness, I always <laughs> have done that in the past. Um, but no, one of the... Um, the helpful reminders for, for this course came last week, and I think it was a conversation happening in Discord just around um, scheduling emails or mm -hmm. this idea that we're scheduling messages during work hours when the tech allows for that. Um, and I thought that it was there was a lot of really interesting perspectives that came into that conversation. And honestly, I I could see both sides. I think. Um, so for me, it was it's kind of this helpful reminder that sort of these social norms or cues can be further blurred in hybrid settings, you know. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I was in an office space, I wouldn't, you know, I could easily see if someone was in a meeting. And so I wouldn't interrupt them and open their office door and go in and ask them questions because I could see that they were doing something else. Right. But in a hybrid working space, that visibility goes out the window and you can't, you know, schedule messages in the same way that, you know, to prevent interrupting someone. Right. So it, it almost sort of falls back on the individual to set their own boundaries or to mute notifications. Um, you know, but I've also found myself saying, okay, you know, Slack has a really cool feature where I can schedule this message when the person is on next, you know, and our team is small enough where I generally have a sense of when folks are working and when they're not. And so I can say, okay, I've got a question for this person, but I'm going to schedule it for, to send to them mm -hmm. and ping them when they're online tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I find myself doing both. And I, I think you know, it's just, it was a helpful reminder for me this week that I think people, or not this week, but just in, throughout this whole course that, you know, everyone I think has a different way that they interpret notifications, mm -hmm. that they, um, you know, interpret working in these environments and being mindful of that is, I think really important when you're working with others that, you know, what's going to work or be respectful for, for someone may not have the same importance for someone else. So I'm not sure if, if Marin, um, you have found something similar or can relate to that, but that's been a, a, a surprisingly helpful reminder for me this week. Mm. And it definitely resonates with me. Um, what a, what a good point. And, I think I had a similar realization, which was around, you know, how much we're all still figuring this out. Like, you know, I've worked in a hybrid team for many years now, and it's, it feels to me like it's still very much a work in progress. And it feels like, you know, many folk that are coming into hybrid teams or coming into the hybrid workplace are figuring it out all over again and everybody's personal families social whatever other circumstances are different and so you're kind of you know you're in some ways educating each other all the time about what what works what doesn't work what is acceptable what is healthy <laughs> you know it, these things change so much and i think it's a really interesting space but it's also you know, it's really, it can be really hard. I think you can get it so wrong so quickly. And that I think is what I find so challenging and also so interesting because there is lots of things that are within my control that I can influence. And then there are so many other things and other people outside of my control that I have no chance to do anything about that I just kind of have to deal with. So yeah, it's it's been a really interesting challenge to reflect on what we can change and what 
you know, what we have power over and things that we can't change that we can kind of work around, cope with, or, you know, sort of just accept. So that's been one of the one of the takeaways for me. That's really great. And I, I would completely relate to that. The other thing I, I'll say too, um, just as we're kind of wrapping up, um, you know, is during this period of reflection, you know, and I think Marin, you mentioned this earlier around, you know, working in your house by yourself. And, you know, if you're not careful, you're just by yourself in your office working all the time. Yeah. And I think, you know, working in hybrid settings or remote settings, you know, it can feel very isolating if you're not careful. And so mm -hmm. making that time or that intentional choice to connect with others, you know, in your hybrid spaces, but also the balance of, getting out and going on walks and having the change of scenery. I think just that balance overall um, has definitely made me a healthier worker uh, because mm. I recognize that about myself, that if I'm not careful, I will start to feel very isolated and removed, um, you know, and I could, you know, blink and suddenly three days will go by and I haven't left my house. And so, yeah. you know, it's important to just remember those things too. Um, and I think this, this course has been helpful for highlighting that for me. Yeah. And, and again, I think, you know, it is so, dependent on individual circumstances. I think, you know, my colleagues who've got young kids at the moment who do school runs, you know, um, they, you know, they sometimes feel like they never leave work because it kind of starts and ends and there is like no break and no escape. And I think an interesting, um, it's interesting, I think, to sort of reflect on both all the possibilities and the advantages of which I think there are so many. And if you gave me a choice to go back to an office-based job, I would never do that. I would be like, no, I'm only ever going to work in a flexible way. I, that's, I used to have an office. I hated it with a passion and I had lovely offices and roughly colleagues and lovely jobs. And I really really disliked it so personally for me this is the right choice um but just because it's a right choice doesn't necessarily mean it's it's all good you know there are i think aspects that are downsides so what about you if you had the chance to start up a new office space uh for for reclaim would you would you do that would you be tempted back to a, a steady desk somewhere <laughs> other than your home you know, there was a period of time where Reclaim did have an office space in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and mm -hmm. I worked in that office space for over a year, I think, um, if if not longer. And I really enjoyed going into the office and seeing colleagues and being able to collaborate in a different way. We're like, hey, let's just go over here and tackle this together. And, you know, also having that separation between work and home where I mm -hmm. could go to work and then leave work and come home. And that was much easier. And mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can ever fully replicate being in person. Um, and I do miss that time, you know, but I, I as you said, Marin, I think I will always sort of gravitate or prefer the flexible working space. So if we ever did have an office again, which I don't think Reclaim currently has plans to, you know, I would want to make sure that everyone feels like, okay, maybe they could do some sort of hybrid thing where, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of days a week we're going in and, you know, we have times where we all know we're going to be together in person to take advantage of collaborating that way. But we also, you know, can work from home and, you know, sit with our pets and, you know, have the flexibility <laughs> when we need it. And so having the hybrid, you know, working environment, I think is not going away for folks, um, you know, and uh, that would be my goal for Reclaim is to make sure that that is still instilled in, in the work that we're doing. Um, so yes and no. <laughs> 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 well, I think it's an interesting question and I'm keen to hear what folks are saying in the chat, you know, um, hybrid, is that is that a long term ideal for you or um, what are there other modes of working that you'd like to explore more? Um, I think we're nearly at the time to talk about celebration instead of checklists. So, yay. <laughs> so this week um, we don't we thought instead of giving you a checklist of things to complete, um, we focused on all the tasks during the session and now 
We want to think about how we can celebrate progress in the course. And you've all done brilliantly well taking time out of your busy schedule to take part and engage. So no matter how you've engaged, no matter how you've taken part, um, there's definitely something to celebrate. Um, we encourage you um, towards the end of the week, we'll post some special posts on Discord, um, but just to give you an idea of what we have in store, we'd really like you to share something that you've learned, share something you might do differently in the future, and also share how you are gonna celebrate the end of the course. And I'm a big believer in this. I didn't use to celebrate my own milestones. Um, so I thought I'm going to um, make more of those, no matter how small. Um, never walk past a cause for celebration. So Lauren, how are you gonna celebrate? Yeah, it's important. Um, I really think part of the celebration, you know, as we sort of done throughout the session is just reflecting on how far we've come and recognizing that growth um, and then setting aside, you know, goals to continue challenging ourselves to continue improving. And I think, you know, this course is pretty cool because you can always redo the roadmap, right? So you can always have the roadmap, um, you know, and then set it aside and grab a fresh copy and check in a couple months from now and retake this course. And maybe it, you know, has you learn something, you know, something new comes to surface or you, you know, take away something else that maybe wasn't uh, as important a couple months previous to that. So um, that's kind of what I'm excited for. But I also, I completely agree with you, Maren. I think it's so important to celebrate those milestones and, mm -hmm. you know, name the fact, you know, we've worked hard to get to this place and look at all we've done and look at where we can go from here. And so, um, you know, trying to do that as a team is just as important too. If you've got team goals that you've set out to accomplish and you do accomplish them or work towards them and hit those milestones, Asana is really great about checking milestones, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really cool. So make sure it's a help. This is a helpful reminder for me as well, Marin. So thank you. But yes, check in with your milestones. Congratulate yourself. Congratulate your team members. And let's keep going. That sounds fun. Yeah, I haven't discovered milestones yet in Asana, so I shall be looking into that. But I think I'm going to make a nice cup of tea and write a celebratory blog post. Um, and yeah. Time for blogging has not been plentiful recently. So I've decided I'm going to give myself some time to just share some personal reflections um, rather than reflecting as a facilitator. I'm going to think about sort of what I personally got out of the course. And I really love the Brian Mathers TV um, icon that we used for the course. So I'm hoping to get some stickers printed um, so that on my new laptop sleeve, I can um, I can add the hybrid working sticker. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's a good idea. Okay, maybe I can work with you on that. We'll get something <laughs> in the Reclaim storefront for a hybrid working sticker. That'd be awesome. Yes, that is a great, great we'll, mind sticker. We'll stay in touch, Marin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, yeah, thank you everyone for uh, participating in Discord. We'll be back this Friday uh, mm -hmm. for final conversations. But of course, we'll keep this channel open this week and beyond. So the conversation doesn't stop here. Let's continue chatting with each other and checking in throughout the week. And we will talk with you soon. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye.